Glory to God in the highest and peace to His people on earth. i got to tell you, Christmas is one of my favorite times of the year. I'm torn if I should say it is my favorite because, well, then I'd have to say Easter wouldn't be my favorite. So I have to say it's one of my favorite times. And one of the things I love about Christmas are some of the wonderful traditions we celebrate both in the church and well, around the world, really. And last night, every Christmas Eve, just about, we have the celebration of our Savior coming into Bethlehem on Christmas Eve with the lighting of candles for our candlelight service. And something about that just always moves me. It moves my heart. It gives me joy as we light those candles as the whole rest of the building is dark, reminding us of the light of Christ in our hearts. And as I looked around, it's not just Christians who light, well, candles or have lights to celebrate Christmas. You drive around the city and you'll notice houses decorated all over the place with different Christmas lights. You walk into homes, you see their trees strung with lights. Some people, they have simple displays. Just maybe a string of lights here or a string of lights there. Some people have lights that you can see probably from space. I was looking online the other day. Some people have very extravagant displays. I don't know if you're familiar with the song by Mannheim Steamroller. That, well, it's not by them, but they did an interpretation of Carol of the Bells. And I saw online a video of someone who had taken their Christmas light and synchronized them with the song. So as the different beats were going up and down, the lights were flashing. Well, let me cut to the chase. I really do not have time to do that myself. And as much as I enjoyed seeing that video, I realized I probably will never do that with my home. And, well, not because I don't like it, but just because I don't know that I have the time. So, now, Carla and I, on the other hand, we have a little bit more simple of a tradition. Kind of actually follows my family's tradition. As we were growing up, we, we rarely put lights on the house, but we would have a Christmas tree lit. And if we had a fireplace... We would light the fireplace, and we just sit there, and we would spend time together. And that's, that's kind of how Carla and I have spent our Christmas season so far. We lit the tree, and we light a candle since we don't have a fireplace, and we just enjoy you know, maybe hot cocoa or some coffee and the Christmas music or each other. And it's interesting, though, because around the world, we celebrate with light. We celebrate with the beauty of Christ's birth. And I don't know that we realize where the origin of Christmas lights came from. How they originally came about. Originally, when we started decorating with Christmas lights, it wasn't actually a decoration. In fact, as you may or may not recall, the Romans persecuted the Christians in the early church. And they drove the Christians into hiding and were at the times of worship. And so they had to use different ways to let other Christians know when they were going to worship. You know, one of them is the ichthys, which is the, the fish that on a lot of cars. But another way they did that was that they would light a single candle and they would put it in the window. And hopefully the Roman soldiers wouldn't realize, but all Christians who went by would know, this is the place where we can worship. This is the place where we can celebrate together. And so that tradition continued on to eventually putting lights, well, candles on a Christmas tree although I think probably we've moved away from that for safety and economic reasons, to now we have lights on a tree. And we continue to celebrate, not because, well, we don't have the same fear as the original Christians did, but we celebrate with light. We enjoy the beauty of Christ entering into our world. And that's why we read a text like John chapter 1 today. John chapter 1 about the light entering into the world. That light, Christ Jesus, who has shined into our hearts who came as a baby, who brought that miraculous light into the lives of all people. And what's so significant about that is when he came, there was great darkness. And I'm not talking about the darkness when we turn off the lights these days. We get ready for bed, and you'll notice, though, that you still have all the clocks on your appliances are still shining, so you won't trip, well, necessarily, as you're going to bed. But that's not the darkness of sin that was in the world when Jesus came. No, the darkness was a blinding darkness. It was a darkness that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was a darkness that you couldn't see right from wrong. It was a darkness that sin had covered the hearts of all people. It was a darkness that only Jesus, the light of the world,
could pierce the heart of that darkness. Could make things right. And He sent John the Baptist to prepare His way. He sent John the Baptist to make straight those paths. To open up, to prepare people's hearts. But it was only Jesus Himself who could bring that light. Who could bring that redemption. The blindness of sin had overcome the light of Christ. Shined as a path for His people. Now just like Christmas lights sometimes go out, sometimes a whole line, sometimes just a bulb. Candles blow out. Sometimes our faith is that way as well. Sometimes as we get caught up in the day-to-day struggles of life, as we get caught up in things that are going on, well, our candle starts to burn a little low. The light of our faith starts to flicker a little bit. And that's why each year we still remember Christ coming as the light of the world. Because as that light, He renews the light in our heart. He renews the light of our faith. Because on our own, we can do nothing. On our own, we would be stuck. Dim, dark, blind, unable to see. But with Christ, we have the light. A light that has come to bring salvation. A light that has come to bring redemption. May this light constantly be a guiding path in our hearts. And may it not only be a guiding path, But like John the Baptist, may it inspire us. May it drive us to bring our faith to other people. Instead of being Christians who bask in the light, who enjoy the light, may we also be Christians who are witnesses to the light, who go out, who share the light with those who are in the darkness. Because there are many, many people who are still in the darkness. Many people who are still caught in the blindness of sin, who need Christ who need Him to shine into their lives as well. So as we celebrate again this year, this Christmas season, may that light be a light that gives you strength. May that light be a light that drives you out to bring the Gospel to all nations. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You for coming into our world, for being a light in the darkness. We thank You for giving us the light of salvation amongst the blindness of sin. Lord Jesus, we pray that You would forgive us in the time when we don't go out and share Your message. We pray that You would inspire us, that You would guide us, that You would lead us, that You would enlighten our paths, that we may go forth to share Your love with all nations. Christ Jesus, our Lord, we thank You for coming as a child in Bethlehem, a light to lighten the, the Gentiles and the glory of Your people of all nations. Amen.